Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video I'd like to take a closer look at the lack of continuity within the raw food movement. And of course the first thing I think of when I think of lack of continuity <clears throat> is I think of controlled opposition. I know without any doubt what Victor Hugo meant when he said there is one thing stronger than all the armies in the world and it's an idea as time has come and that's why I always say test an idea as time has come. And the only way anything can be stronger than all the armies in the world is when we destroy the mentality that allows those armies to exist. And that's where the first mistake comes into play. That's how we lost our mentality, or lost one of our senses, and it changed our mentality. So I understand that the raw vegan movement is very, very threatening to a large group of people. I shouldn't say a large group, I should say a very small group of people that own and control virtually every major sector of human endeavor. So they're able to control what we think and therefore what we do. And <clears throat> getting distracted because someone's walking this way and uh, I'll just keep on talking and see if he keeps coming. Anyway, uh, I know controlled opposition exists. I, I know it. I see it all the time. I see internet shields everywhere. I see how they suck up to people who are the friendly posters that don't really have anything to offer that's threatening to the powers that be so they're, they're friendly to them and they get them as allies so they become the useful idiots that help them. I see that all the time. So we know there's going to be uh, raw food uh, infiltrators within the raw food movement itself, and I'm convinced there's actually uh, another way, in fact I've been thinking about this recently, that if I owned the world and I knew this was an idea of time is coming, I'm convinced it is, then what, how would I control the opposition? Well, you'd, you'd put people in the raw food movement to, to, to create, and here he comes again, to create disharmony uh, or create conflict and say fruit is bad, and then you'd also put people in the vegetarian movement to make sure that they didn't take the next step. and then. Uh, go raw vegan. So when you think about the possibility of someone like John McDougal being controlled opposition, that's not an uh, unlikely possibility. It's very possible that someone like him could have been implanted only for one reason, and that is to make sure that the most likely group of people who could take it to the next step and go raw vegan would be the vegans. <clears throat> so uh, is, that, is that what's happening? And, 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 and what do we do about it? Uh, and, and is that really what we should focus on? Um, well, we need to be aware that, uh, that, that, that we can't trust anyone, even myself, question everything. Question their motives, question what they're saying. Does it make any sense to cook our food? No, it doesn't. So anyone who says anything against that is already suspect in my mind. But the key here is that, is that inside the raw vegan movement at least, we've got to stop shooting inside the tent and we've got to offer a unified message to the masses. Instead of saying, oh, it should be all fruit or it should all be this, let's approach the masses the way I think is the best way to approach. Let's just say that we're making five main mistakes. And a raw vegan diet, by the way, corrects all five of those mistakes. There's three ways to correct those five mistakes, water fasting, juice fasting, and a raw vegan diet. Most people aren't willing to do uh, a raw vegan diet and water fasting to get everyone's attention. That's why I'm convinced the juice fasting is the best way to get us to the tipping point. So that's why I keep saying, let's test an idea as time has come. Let's Let's, let's do something that's stronger than all the arms in the world. Let's get reconnected and change our mentality. So if we all become raw vegans, who's going to join the Progerian class? No one's going to join the Progerian class so that the rules of the world can have these thugs control us. We won't get rid of the thugs and we get rid of the psychopaths who control the thugs. So you have to look at the first cause. You have to understand how important our raw food message is. And we've got to stop shooting inside the tent I understand why people go to certain approaches and why they're doing what they're doing. In fact, there's some brilliant people out there doing some brilliant work, uh, except the only problem is that they don't know how to market their ideas to the masses, so what they do is they don't understand the win-win concept, so they shoot inside this tent and they say, oh my God, look how bad the fruit is. Don't do the fruit, do what I'm doing. And what this guy is doing is offering a good solution for people who don't have access to fruit. But he shouldn't promote it by attacking fruit just because he can't have access to it and he's got to you know, figure out a way around it. He did a great job of figuring out how to work around it, but he hasn't figured out a creative way to get it out to them, to, to get a market coming to him. Well, what you have to do is think win-win. When you 
offer a unified message when you don't fight inside the tent or when you don't shoot inside the tent, when you don't tip the canoe over, then what happens is the movement grows. As the movement grows, then a larger percentage of people are going to gravitate to and resonate to what you're saying because of where they're at. In fact, the work you guys are doing, some of you, Brian, talking about you, my friend, you're doing some brilliant work that's going to help a lot of us transition once we get to where we need to be. But you shoot inside the tent all the time and say how bad fruit is, and that's hogwash. Anybody who is against fruit simply does not truly understand the true cause of disease, at least from the perspective of the lymph system. A lot of people know our bodies are full of filth and we got to detox them, but they really don't understand how the lymph system backs back up into our tissues. And that fruit is the best thing to move, that lymph, to move the lymph fluid, and so is fasting. That's why fasting is so powerful. Every practitioner out there who doesn't understand that fasting is the first thing we should do for everybody before we start doing the art is a fool. Even for many people on a raw food diet, that might not be the best step. But remember, water fasting, we got to prepare for that now because of the, if you have a bunch of toxins inside your body, environmental toxins that we need uh, 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 glutathione for to complete this two phase process, the liver goes through to eliminate it. So that's why water fasting is not a, a viable option. That's why the juice fast, the juice feast, this solid food vacation that I created, that I perfected, is an idea as time has come because it's the only thing that's going to get enough of us to do something to get everyone's attention. And the reason why the vegetarian diet isn't successful in selling its approach, why they don't appeal to most people, because it's just not good enough. And people say, oh, John, you could widen your market if you just, you know, appeal to the vegetarians too. And I've been quite a few comments recently on the message board saying he just doesn't understand this and yet I've talked about it many times I understand it fully well very well that 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 there are more people being vegetarian than raw vegan right now but what most people don't understand is that the raw vegan message is an easy sell if you can simply get people to see what they're missing and that's what they don't know that's where the juice fast comes into play because you see results ten times faster than going raw vegan and what happens within a short period of time the light bulb goes off, the aha moment happens. Eureka, I get it. I'm getting reconnected, I see the filth coming out of me. That wasn't happening on a starch-based diet. You can't get rid of crap in your colon eating a starch-based diet. I know, because that was part of why I had crap in my colon. I was eating too much food as an athlete, and it wasn't the right food. Plugged me up, I had a 20-pound cesspool in me. Had to, had to rehydrate it to get out of me. It was like a big old hard, dried up sponge clinging on to me, it was like a gob of Grease or axle, imagine a gob of axle grease stuck on the side of your colon wall. There's no way you're going to get that off unless you rehydrate it. It might weigh an ounce. By the time it comes out, it might weigh a pound or 10 ounces. Who knows what it's going to take to rehydrate that hardened mass of, of crap inside your colon. Remember, one of the main jobs the colon has is to recycle water. If you look at our digestive process, there's three cycles of food. Remember, our so called experts don't study the elimination cycle. But in the beginning, what do we do with our food? We convert it to liquid, because you can't have little hot dogs rolling through the blood, right? That can't get into the cell, so we gotta turn whatever we eat into liquid. That right there should make you think about what you're eating. Uh, and then uh, it goes into the small intestines, 22 feet. Uh, surface area can, can cover the area of the tennis court. It's sucking in those nutrients. And then the last five feet, as it comes in, as a watery median, the, the body's going, hey, 70% of our body is supposed to be water, but guess what, I'm only 50%. I want to suck out all the water no matter what, but since I'm only 50%, I'm going to really suck that water out of what's left. And if you have bowel movements that come out solid in form, you're constipated, at least mildly. Because if your bowel movements are coming out formed, it took too long to go through the system, and a lot of water got sucked out of it. So if you're eating meat, it's going to take three days to come out of here. It's always going to come out form. You're eating the wrong food, you stupid fool. Wake up and realize what's going on. I call you a fool because you've been tricked. I'm not calling you... A, a, a chump. We're all been fools. I'm tired of being a fool. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. All right, you can't get fooled again. <laughs> George Bush, why do we have idiots like that in office? Why do we have all of the presidents, all the people, all the elections? It's all bad. We got to change everything. And, and you can see how it's all connected. I mean, why, why, you know, you look at the political system, look at everything. It's all related to our food. Don't you see how important that is? And, and how do we make the mistake? Well, do the only one that most people are willing to do. And when people do a solid food vacation for several months, it resets your whole feedback system, 
That's the easiest way to eat the right food because it's gonna taste good to you. And I know people are living in places that, that they can't adopt a lot of fruit right now. Well, Brian is mastering a way to use sprouts for those people. So there's a way to work around this until enough of us reach the tipping point. And once that happens, this is what is incomprehensible. I try to visualize it and it's impossible. And most people don't even think about it or contemplate it, but I think about it all the time. What's gonna happen when we do reach the tipping point? Well, we know that we know what happens when we reach the critical mass. It takes forever to get there. It may take, uh, let's say if it takes, uh, you know, well, I don't wanna bring numbers up, but it takes like 99% of the time just to get to the tipping point. And then within like 1% of the time, it's boom, all the rest happens. That's how fast it happens. And once that happens, once most of us are connected, we're gonna realize how important it is to make sure everything around us is the best that it can be. We'll figure out these solutions. We'll figure out what to do where we can't grow their food. And, and it will be a non-issue. We don't have to worry about, well, let me see, can I really grow more food if I grow grains instead? Who cares? We're not supposed to eat grains. Who gives a flip what the statistics are one way or the other when you talk about, well, we can support this way even more. Well, we're not supposed to go that way. Don't do that way. Don't make the first of all mistakes, the cooking of our food. Remember, when we cook our food, it puts us under a spell. What happens to us when we eat something unnatural? We have a withdrawal symptom. That's why we have this all gone feeling in the belly. Belly, it's a gnawing sensation. It's a morbid sensation trying to tell you Give me my drug! And what happens when you eat it? Oh, it feels so good, doesn't it? Oh, I must really need that food. Yeah, just like the heroin addict does. Just like the cigarette smoker does. Just like the coffee addict does. Yes, give me my drug, I want it. And what happens if you don't get it? You're miserable, aren't you? You're under the hunger spell. I even did a couple of videos on this. Go down below, and if I don't have it in there, look at my YouTube channel, you'll find it. It, it, it refers to what Plato said. Whatever deceives men, seems to produce a magical enchantment. Now, what does he mean by that? We're under a spell. Cooking our food puts us under a spell. God sends the food and the devil sends the cooks. <laughs> I love those quotes when I read them. Yeah, who said that one? Man is the only creature on this planet that spoils his food before he eats it, except for our domesticated animals. I'm always amazed that animals have any type of sixth sense at all. And I thought about this quite a while back. And I thought to myself, well, the reason probably would be they don't have this grim brain of ours that gets in the way, and they got to rely more on their senses, and even though their biophoton levels may only be 10 or 20% of where they are, they still know what's going on, don't they? They can sense a good person or a bad person, and I'm the same way. When I meet people, I can get a sense off of them in a way that's uh, hard to explain. I just feel it. You, just like a dog would feel it, you can sense people that just aren't right. And if I look them in the eyes, I can, you know, they, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. It's hard to explain. But these are the type of things that happen to us when we bump up our biophotons. It changes who we are. And that's why we struggle as a species. We are a senseless species. We've lost one of our senses. <clears throat> we have the wrong mentality. We still have war and crime and violence. What's going on with that? Why can't we find a cure for heart disease or cancer or diabetes, well, we have solutions for all of these. It all has to do with whether or not we're satisfying our needs, especially our diet. And that's why I say we made five main mistakes. So let's offer a unified message to the masses. Let's stop shooting inside the tent. And <clears throat> John McDougall is not inside my tent. My tent only has five mistakes. McDougall has two mistakes. Paleo people have two mistakes. One doesn't have the third mistake, one doesn't have the second mistake, but they both have the first mistake. It's the biggest mistake. It's the only mistake we should focus on because if we don't make that mistake, we don't make the other mistakes. Why can't you wrap your brain around it? Are you addicted to cooked food? Are you under the hunger spell? Have you ever felt hunger here? If you have, you are addicted to cooked food and you're in denial if you don't go, John, how do I do the juice fast? Go down below and go to the description box, watch a seminar I gave on how to do this. Ah, I lose my voice screaming at you guys. And if, you don't, if you're not convinced, watch the Dr. Robo interview, see me on the Deborah Duncan Show, look at the before and after pictures. And when you do this, you're in for a treat.